Hi there, welcome to the Radiology Physics channel. In this video, we will be looking at the most commonly studied, taught and practiced topic of interest by almost all of us watching this video. That is, the three principles of radiological protection or radiation safety. So what are the three principles of radiological protection? What are some examples of the same? And what is the ultimate value and benefit of these principles if practiced? Shall we try answering these questions? The three principles of radiological or radiation protection are namely justification, optimization and dose limits. Justification of practice, optimization of protection and application of dose limits. Justification By saying justification, we mean or argue that we justify the medical use of radiation in healthcare practice. That is, any decision that alters the radiation exposure situation should do more good than harm. We are simply saying that there should be more benefit than harm or risks associated with the biological effects of radiation. For example, a deterministic biological effect of cataract in the lens of the eye or a radiation induced stochastic or a probabilistic carcinogenic effect. Here's a lovely example of how justified use of radiation can save lives. In this case, the precious lives of a mother and a child in her womb. The images of the CT scan show a pregnant woman who met with a motor vehicle accident. After a 3 minute CT exam and taken to the operating theater, she and the child survived which is indeed invaluable and a life-saving benefit from a justified practice of the medical use of radiation. Coming to optimization, by saying optimization, we mean or argue that only a minimally practicable amount of radiation exposure should be practiced when practiced. That is, as the definition goes, doses should all be kept as low as reasonably practicable, taking into account economic and societal factors. We are simply saying that a justified practice must also be optimized. The amount or the level of radiation exposures to the general public, the patients and the staff, that is radiation workers, should be kept as low as reasonably practicable. Here are some examples, the general public. The general public generally would be around the vicinity of a radiation environment such as immediately outside of a CT scan room or present immediately on the other side of the wall of an interventional radiology room. This includes hospital staff as well who are not radiation workers. Another example, the patients. The patients who undergo medical exposures as part of their own medical diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. For example, this includes every patient who undergoes a chest X-ray or a head CT scan. In this example, we see how the extra radiation dose to the patient could be reduced by doing proper collimation by exposing only the region of clinical interest. The next example, the staff, that is radiation workers who are incurred with occupational radiation exposure as part of their own duty while applying the medical use of radiation to the benefit of the patient. In this example, we see how the radiation dose rate or the radiation levels vary at different distances from the patient who is the source of the scattered radiation. Staff working in such radiation environment can minimize their radiation exposure with increasing distance. As stated in the inverse squared law, the radiation level decreases with the distance squared, meaning doubling the distance from the patient would reduce the radiation dose exposure by a factor of 4. In this example, a staff standing at 50 cm from the patient, if taken a step back by just 50 cm, then the radiation would significantly drop by 4 times, and another step away would reduce the radiation level by 9 times. In fact, distance is the most effective radiation protection strategy when compared to time and shielding. Also, please note that appropriate shielding such as lead equivalent glasses and radiation protective apparels would decrease the radiation to the staff more than 90 to 95 percentage. And therefore, here the ultimate value is 
a minimized risk of radiation-induced cancers to the general public, a benefit to the diagnosis or treatment of the patient with the aid of radiation, and protection of those patients from harmful biological effects of radiation, either by eliminating it or minimizing the probability of it. The next value would be a benefit to the staff. So, a benefit to the staff in medically serving the highest good of the patients by reasonable use of radiation, but also the protection of the staff themselves. That is, elimination of any harmful effects of radiation or minimization of the risk of radiation-induced cancers by simply practicing time-distance shielding principles. We should practice time-distance and shielding principles in our own practices. That is, minimize the time exposed to the radiation, maximize distance from the source of radiation, and use protective radiation shielding devices or apparels where appropriate. The next principle, dose limits. By saying dose limits, we mean or argue that radiation doses to the exposed individuals should not exceed the defined permissible amounts of radiation doses, or in other words, should be prevented from exceeding these defined limits. This does not apply to patients' medical exposures. As the definition goes, the total dose to any individual from regulated sources in planned exposure situation other than medical exposure of patients should not exceed the appropriate limits specified by the Commission. We are simply saying that radiation exposures are both monitored and controlled. The ICRP recommends dose limits based on the radiation sensitivity of different organs of an individual and a corresponding whole body exposure. Here are some examples. Here is a table showing the dose limits specified by the ICRP for occupational and public exposures. Two types of limit. Effective dose in millisievert as applied to whole body exposure and equivalent doses in millisievert as applied to the lens of the eye, skin and extremities and fetus as well. Fetus meaning offspring in a mother's womb. The fetus is considered to be a member of the public and hence the 1 millisievert dose limit. The occupational dose limit is 20 ms per calendar year, averaged over a defined period of 5 years. Hence the specified dose limits are meant to protect both the staff and the general public and are helpful to make special provisions such as radiation shielding barriers as in room wall thickness of an x-ray room, light aprons for the staff in an interventional radiology room and so on to effectively control and monitor their exposure within the specific limits. Coming to our final take-home thoughts. Number one, the three principles of radiological protection or radiation protection are wise, practical principles aiming to eliminate the deterministic effects and minimize the probability or the chances of stochastic effects of radiation to the general public, patients, and the staff. Number two, a justified procedure or a justified exposure must also be optimized. Number three, by the application of dose limits, we monitor and control radiation exposures and make special provisions for the general public and the staff who are exposed to radiation in the healthcare setting. 